वेलकम बैक टू हेलीडे रेजनिक क्रेन वॉल्यूम टू चैप्टर नंबर थर्टी थ्री द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड ऑफ अ करंट इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर आई विल डिस्कस द एम सी क्यू सोल्यूशन ऑफ दिस चैप्टर सो लेट्स बिगिन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन इज टू पॉजिटिव चार्जेस क्यू वन क्यू टू दे आर मूविंग इन राइट इन फिगर थर्टी थ्री पॉइंट टू एट इन दिस फिगर सो वट इज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ फोर्स ऑन चार्ज क्यू वन ड्यू टू द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड प्रोड्यूस बाई चार्ज क्यू टू so we have to find the direction of force on charge q1 due to the charge q2 so the options are into the page out of the page up to the page or down to the page so first of all here we need to know what is the magnetic field due to the charge q2 here in this diagram i have shown the magnetic field of charge q2 if the velocity of the charge is in this direction then on the bottom of this charge the magnetic field is into the paper and on to the top of this magnetic field is out of the paper so basically this is the magnetic field due to the charge q2 so now what is the effect on q1 due to this magnetic field as a charge q1 is basically influenced by this direction of magnetic field so the velocity of the charge q1 is in the right one direction like this one and the magnetic field uh, the, that is present externally due to the charge q2 is out of the paper then what Uh, would be the force force would be downward by using the right hand palm rule here this is the right hand palm rule in which the velocity of the uh, charge is uh, in the right direction and the magnetic field is into the paper but in our case it's out of the paper so we will just opposite it then the force will, the direction of the force will be downward like this one the force is downward so option d is the correct option next question is what is the direction of the force on charge q2 due to the magnetic force produced by q1 you can see here the charge q1 and its magnetic field here is out of the paper and here it's into the paper so the charge q2 that is being influenced by the magnetic field of q1 is only this this one and it's into the paper so for this case if the magnetic field is into the paper and it's moving towards the right direction then the force uh, would be in the upper direction from right hand rule you can see this one here charge is moving this direction the magnetic field is inward and you can see here the the force would be upward so the force on charge q uh, due to the magnetic field of charge q1 is basically up to the page you can see here next is question number 2 consider the magnitude of magnetic field on the axis of z circular current loop bz will be maximum where z is equal to 0 when z is less than infinity and greater than 0 or z is equal to infinity a and c both option are correct in this diagram you can see the that circular loop if uh, the magnetic field the value of magnetic field will be maximum when we are at the center of this loop where z is equal to 0 and you can see whenever you are moving away from the source charge then basically the magnetic field is actually decreasing so this is the expression b is equal to mu not i r square over 2 r square plus z square raised to power 3 by 2 that is for the magnetic field at the point p here so whenever we are simply uh, decreasing z to the 0 then here the magnetic field will be maximum and when we are increasing the z towards the infinity then the magnetic field would be 0 so the maximum magnetic field would be when z is equal to 0 and this is at the center of the circular loop right here next question is bz that is magnetic field can be zero where we can see that from the diagram that magnetic field would be zero at infinity like here you can see the expression b is equal to mu not i r square over 2 capital r square plus z square raised power 3 by 2 when the value of z is infinity then you get something over infinity you get zero so the correct option is option c question number 3 is the negatively charged disk in figure 3329 is rotating clockwise what is the direction of the magnetic field at point a in the plane of the disk the possible options are into the page out of the page up of the page and down to the page so this is the disk which is negatively charged and it's actually rotating clockwise so we have to find the magnetic field at this point so you can see here this is a disk it's actually moving uh, in clockwise uh, direction because there are number of charges so collective motion of negative charges is in the clockwise direction so we will use here simple right hand rule to find the direction so if we curl the finger in clockwise direction then the the direction of current would be uh, into the paper for the positive charges but for the negative charges it would be the reverse of the direction so it means that out of the paper would be the correct choice similarly you can also use left hand rule for negative charges then the result would be the same 
it will be out of the paper so here option b is the correct option where the magnetic field is at point a is out of the page question number four a loop of wire of length l carrying a current i can be wound once as shown in figure 33 30a or twice as in figure b so the ratio of the magnetic field strength b1 at the center of the single loop to the strength b2 at the center of the double loop will be so it means that we have to find the ratio of magnetic field for this loop to this loop you can solve this question via when you are simply doubling the length l of the wire into the two loops so it means that here you are actually uh, reducing the radius from r to r by 2 in for this here is the solution for b1 uh, for the first case you have the magnetic field due to a uh, current carrying circular coil that is mu naught i by 2r so for the small loop when you are uh, just simply bound coil into the two loops then radius becomes half it's r by 2 then you get mu naught i by capital r after that you are simply taking the ratio of b1 by b2 b1 is mu naught i by 2r where b2 is mu naught i by capital r so everything is just cancelled and you get 1 by 2 so option c is the correct option the ratio of b1 to b2 is 1 by 2 question number 5 is related to parallel currents a long straight wire carries a current to the north a second long straight wire 0.5 meter vertically above the first wire carries an identical current to the east both wires are long enough to be considered in finite in length a part is what is the direction of the net force on the top wire because of the current in the bottom wire up down north south or the net force is zero so let's consider the situation in this way uh, where it was given in the question that the first wire is carrying current i is actually mo moving towards the north where another wire of uh, the infinite length is actually 0 0.5 meter above in which current is directing towards the east direction so here you have to find the net force on this wire in th on this top wire because of this wire here again according to simple right hand rule if the current is if you just simply keep your thumb in the direction of current then the magnetic field in the right word of this uh, current loop would be into the paper and towards the left side it would be out of the it would be coming out of the paper now this magnetic field like here into the paper and this is out of the paper is acting as a external magnetic field for this wire that is directing towards the east direction so here current is in right direction and the magnetic field here at this point at the half of this wire is actually into the paper so the force will be upward according to right hand palm rule like this way upward and at the second side because of the magnetic field it's uh, out of the paper so the force would be reversed to this direction so it, here it is downward and here is upward is force and this force because the direction of the forces is opposite so the net force would be zero so option E is the correct option. Question number six, two parallel currents are directed out of the page. Compare the magnitude of the magnetic field B2 at any arbitrary point equidistance from the wires to the magnitude of the magnetic field at the point from one wire alone. So it means that B2 is the magnetic field due to the both wires, where B1 is the mag magnetic field due to only single wire. The parallel currents actually attract each other. In this situation, both magnetic field would be add up. So this is for sure that the magnetic field due to the both uh, wires is basically greater than the magnetic field due to the single wire. Question number seven is anti-parallel currents are directed so that one is out of the page and the other is into the page. Compare the magnitude of the magnetic field at any arbitrary point equidistance from the wires to the magnitude of the field at that point from, from a single wire. So basically here you have the same situation but the currents are anti-parallel one is into the page and other is out of the page so we have to find the magnetic field due to the both wires is actually greater or less than the magnetic field due to the single wire the same situation is given on the page of Halliday rising crane volume 2 page number of 756 you can see here diagrams both currents are anti-parallel basically one is um, into the paper and the other one is out of the paper so in this case you can see that here magnetic field is in this direction and for I2 current the magnetic field is in this direction then we just simply add up these two add these two vectors and we get this magnetic field capital B so in the calculation you can see for the calculation you can use this formula as we know that here the magnetic field are similar in both cases so here you can see that the magnetic field due to the single wire like 80 micro tesla 
and the second one is 171 micro tesla and when we are just simply taking the magnitude the complete total magnitude of these two wires then you get 190 micro tesla this value is greater than these two values so it's mean that the magnetic field due to the two wires is actually greater than the magnetic field to the any single wire so basically option a is the correct option